So you've decided to move to Utah. Coming to Salt Lake, here are the pros and cons of living in Salt Lake City. What's up guys, Nick DeSeal Horse here with another video. I'm your Salt Lake City Realtor. Engage with me in any way you need. I am here for you to educate you on all things Salt Lake. So we're talking about the pros and cons. There's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons, but let's focus on the pros first. So pro of living in Salt Lake. We've got an international airport, it's outstanding. You can fly anywhere. You really can't fly anywhere. Just a matter of where you want to go direct. There's a lot of direct flights. We are the Delta hub. So internationally, you can fly to many different places. One of the most direct flights that I've taken recently is to Amsterdam. So we flew to Amsterdam. We hopscotched over to Iceland. We had an amazing time. It was outstanding. Flew back into Amsterdam, went over to Italy. It was really an amazing experience. So having the international airport within 30 minutes of a major city, within 45 minutes of the top of the mountain it's amazing so you can go skiing you can stay up at one of the major resorts and then get down to the valley into the international airport and fly home all within an hour amazing so that is a major pro for living here in salt lake number two is the economy it's an amazing economy we're touted as being one of the top five strongest economies in the nation for the past three years i mean really for the past five and beyond we've been touted as one of the strongest economies in the nation for quite a while now and it's because we have rolling into another one, an amazing education. So we have a really strong public education here at an early age, even down to the elementary school level, up through high school. And then we've got some major universities, major hitters with the University of Utah and BYU. And then up north in Logan, you got Utah State. So you've got some amazing education, which helps bring in the workforce because people stick around because of the outdoor recreation. So you're gonna have an amazing education, you're gonna stick around for the amazing outdoor recreation, world class, let's not be you know, humble about it. We've got amazing skiing, we've got amazing rock climbing, beautiful vistas to even just hike to. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for these amazing places to get to, again, within 30 to 45 minutes of where you're living, and you've got an amazing job to help you compensate for the one of the cons that we'll talk about later. One of the other amazing things, pros about Salt Lake, is we have wonderful arts. We care a lot about, you know, we got Ballet West, one of the earliest ballets, and going to the Ballet West, you know, seeing the Nutcracker around Christmas time, it's one of our fans family's oldest traditions and so Ballet West amazing it's in the Capitol Theater which is one of the oldest theaters here in Salt Lake you've got also amazing performances there and then they built the new Eccles Theater which hosts a lot of the Broadway shows you know I just saw Hairspray with my mom a few weeks ago it was amazing the cast is incredible it's Broadway, they travel around, they come to Utah, stay in Salt Lake for a few days, put on an amazing show. So yeah, the art scene here is really fun. There's also amazing concerts. We're at the crossroads of the West, so we have a lot of huge names come in for music, for big concerts. We got USANA, which is an outdoor venue, which you know hosts some major shows. The Delta Center, let's be real, it always has been the Delta Center, and it's coming back, the Delta Center. So that's an amazing arena, indoor concert arena that has some amazing shows. So yeah, the music scene, the art scene is absolutely fantastic. And not to mention, you know, a lot of people during the pandemic got into comedy. We have some amazing comedians come in through our wide Wise Guys Theaters downtown at the Gateway. So pay attention to the arts, y'all. Salt Lake City has some amazing opportunities for you to delve into the cultural arts and just have an amazing experience, have an amazing time. So let's hit on some of those cons that I mentioned. One of the things that I mentioned was the reason that people need some amazing jobs, and that's the affordability. The housing affordability is getting crazy because so many people are moving here and we are limited in the scope that we can actually build. There are some amazing places being developed currently, like Daybreak, more in the west side of the valley that has some of the room to actually grow. But most of the valley is constrained by these amazing mountains. You know, we got the Ochre Mountains on the west side, we've got the Wasatch Front, and it really constrains us into this valley, so you can't build out what's already there. It's, it's very limited, and unless you get cities on board to really densify the city, which a lot of cities are against density, uh, you know, they tout really wanting more density, but it's, it's hard when 
you have certain aesthetics, you have certain people living in the area who don't want density. Anyways, it's a whole big thing that we talk about at another time. But densifying the area is really the only option we have because it's already built out. So affordability does go down because existing homes prices go up as people move in and we can't build houses fast enough so affordability is an issue but Salt Lake City did come out and say that they're gonna use 25 million dollars that they got from the pandemic to help the state and the city and we're gonna use that to build 1500 new affordable housing options so that's something I'm gonna be paying attention to I can educate you and guys keep you guys in the loop as we go through this process of living and uh, existing within Salt Lake and enjoying your time here, we are going to have some amazing affordable housing options for people who need it. So that's something to pay attention to. Another con is the air quality. That's one of my biggest concerns and my biggest uh, headaches and my biggest cons for living here is the air quality. If we have consistent weather patterns come through the valley, it does blow out the smog that naturally congregates here in the valley. Uh, it was called Called Smoky Valley as an indigenous term here. The valley is in a way where pressure systems, low pressure systems come in and they put a cap on the valley and everything that's in that valley just kind of sits there and fills up. Before humanity, it would just be the hot springs, the natural vapors, the natural life that was in the valley and it would just become really foggy and mysterious and wild. But now, you know, we drive cars, we've got industry that fills up with PM 2.5, which is just a, you know, we can get into that too another time. But if you want uh, more information on that, look up PM 2.5, it's just, it's a it's bad, bad air quality. Let's be real, that's all it really means. Is it's harmful for people with certain health conditions, you know, severe asthma, severe lung conditions. So the air quality isn't great, but if we do have those consistent storm cycles, it does blow out and it doesn't stay bad for more than two or three days, let's say. Um, in the summers, we do have ozone effects, so you can't see it like you do in the winter, but it does get bad in the summers as well. But again, we do tend to see consistent storm cycles come through and blow it out. So it is something to be concerned about. It is a con, but it's not terrifying. But leading into the other con, which is water, if we don't take serious precautions with our water and do some, some major things to prevent the Great Salt Lake from drying up, the air quality will become much, much worse because all of the, the lake bed of Great Salt Lake has a lot of heavy metals, things like arsenic. And if the lake were to dry up, all of that super light, dusty arsenic and all the particles within the lake bed will just blow into the air and contaminate our air. And much of the major West metropolitan cities will also be affected by it. So it's a serious thing, not for us, the state of Utah and Salt Lake, but many people outside the region uh, should and are concerned about it. So it's not something that I am optimistic that there's a lot of people who are gonna be doing some major, major things uh, to get a grasp on this and do what's right and make it uh, an amazing place to live for now and many, 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 many years in the future. But right now, water is another concern. As you'll see it throughout many parts of the West, water is just a major topic and it's something that we need to be considerate of. How we use our water outside our houses, how we use it inside our houses, but also just how we use it to farm. Agriculture is the number one consumer of water and we don't need to be growing alfalfa in the state of Utah in a desert and shipping it wherever it goes. We don't need to be doing that. So that's that's an area that we will be addressing in the future. It's something that is going to happen. We're just gonna have to cut back on the way we we grow alfalfa. <laughs> let's, be, let's be real. We don't need that much alfalfa. We can do other things. So yeah, water use, major, major con, and it's something that will be addressed, is being addressed, and I am opportunistic thinking that it's going to be handled in the next five to ten years and continue to be an amazing place to live. Okay, so one of the funny ones that I like to talk about with cons is Charles Barkley was here in Salt Lake for, it was the playoffs or the finals, I don't know for sure, but he was, he was saying how uh, Salt Lake just has no nightlife. He doesn't like being here, there's nothing to do at night. That's kind of true. You know, when you're comparing 
us to places like LA, Miami, or other major metropolitan areas, we don't have a significant nightlife. We don't have the clubs. I mean, we do have clubs, but we don't have like this major city center with multiple clubs, multiple bars. You just walk around all these places. Uh, we do have some amazing bars. We do have a budding nightlife scene. As we do get this influx of the people from throughout the nation, we do get amazing uh, restaurants and more nightlife, to be frank. So we, we are seeing it pop up, which is really fun to see. You do need to take one of those bird scooters and go throughout the, the downtown area. They're not all in this small corridor. So you do need to travel to a lot of the bars, but it's a really fun, really fun way to get around town because we do have a really bikeable and commuter friendly bird city downtown. So hop on one of those, scoot around. You can even just jump on tracks, our light rail system, and just pop around to different bar, bar venues and different clubs. So we do have a nightlife scene. It's just not as big as some of the other metro areas. So that is one of the cons, but it's fun to watch it grow. So it's one of the pros for me. And last one, you know, many of you have heard, it used to be more of a stigma, but it's still something. It's the predominant religion, the LDS religion, the Mormon uh, religion that is predominant in Salt Lake. They do have control of a lot of the land, um, the church and state. You know, it's a very big debate. But we are seeing that uh, change over time. As more people move here, we're seeing uh, their voices aren't as loud as they once were and uh, things are changing. They're also more open-minded to doing things differently. So they also gave a ton of water to the Great Salt Lake. So they delegated a lot of water to keep it full. For better or for worse, they are predominant religion here. It is what it is. So those are the cons. Focus on the pros, the international airport, the amazing outdoor recreation, the beautiful cultural experiences, the ballet, the Broadway, the concerts, the outdoor concert venue, Revue Gardens, look it up. Come see some shows in the garden. Woo, amazing. The beauty is phenomenal. It's, it's an amazing, beautiful place to live. And so focus on the pros. Weigh the cons, decide what you want to do. If you do decide to move here and you're interested, hit me up, ask me questions, shoot me a DM, leave a comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell if you like this kind of content and you want to be notified when I do upload a new video. I appreciate it. I really do. I look forward to seeing you guys in the real world and talking to you over the phone, DMs, whatever it may be. I'll see you guys on the next one.